Having access to the internet is really important when we're on the road with our RV. And today we're gonna to talk about how we stay connected in this episode of Travels with Delaney. Welcome back everyone, my name's Patrick. And I'm Patty. And today we're doing another one of our monthly collaboration videos with five of our RV YouTube friends, mm -hmm. including Brazen Brits, Tree Talker the Traveler, Travels Abound, Wayward Wags, and Happy Place Diaries. Now, when we get to the end of this video, Patty will link a playlist right up there, <laughs> but wait till the end of the video, and then you can check out our friends' videos to find out how they stay connected mm -hmm. to the internet. Patty, let's get started, and why is it important for us to have internet? Because you know, a lot of people when they go camping, they're like, hey, I wanna be off the grid. Well, one reason I can think of is our jobs. I mean, definitely we need to be connected, especially you, to what's going on in your job and sometimes me. So definitely a job is one reason why we need to be connected. And if you're new to our channel and you're not familiar, we are not full-time RVers, no. but we are teachers. Mm -hmm. And so we a lot of times take off for six to eight weeks in the summer months, and we're still trying to work from the road. Right. And if we don't have good internet, we can't return emails, Patty can't work on lesson plans. Exactly. And I can't participate in required Zoom meetings. First way that most people think they can stay connected is if you're staying at an RV park, you can connect to the RV park's Wi-Fi. Well, and sometimes we found out on our travels it's not always reliable. I would say sometimes, Patty, is an understatement. Oh, <laughs> okay, most of the time. <laughs> yeah, because these RV parks, they advertise free Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. But when you get there... It's just, there's nothing. Um, we've had to, you know, kind of like, I guess, punt and go out and try to find a good signal yeah. and uh, get things that we need done, but uh, it's not, I can think of in Maine. Um, we were at a place and it wasn't good at all. No, it was a state park. They said they had Wi-Fi and we paid for access codes, but the truth was it just really wasn't that good. No. I was constantly walking around trying to get near one of their oh, yeah. towers to try to just get enough signal to get emails to go right. out. It was so. like we were just trying to like find a signal. <laughs> yeah, and some RV parks that do have good Wi-Fi then have restrictions. Right. We were at one recently where the Wi-Fi was actually pretty good, but it said right on their literature no that- No streaming. No streaming. Mm -hmm. if, they, if their system picked up you were streaming or doing anything with heavy broadband usage, they would actually cut you back. Exactly. Now, there are a few exceptions that we have found. Oh yeah. The ridge down in Pigeon Forge Town Amazing. Yeah, they had a router, I swear, about every other site. It and was so fast. It the was, internet it, was awesome. Yeah. And then our friends Jeff and yep. Lynn up at Forest Ridge RV Park in Ellsworth, Maine, they not only have amazing Wi-Fi, but they actually encourage you to stream. Right, because they have the whole park set up for streaming. It was, a, I guess, a better deal for them to go streaming. Yep, they took out their cable TV mm -hmm. hookups, and now they actually will sell little streaming devices. That way, if you don't have like a Roku or an Apple TV or yep. something in your RV, you can just purchase one there, stream while you're staying if you want to watch TV, and then when you leave, you get to take the device with you. I know, isn't that cool? But Forest Ridge, honestly, is the exception. Yes. Most places just do not it's have not great Wi-Fi, yep. even if they advertise it. Mm -mm. So, for us, what is our go-to in the RV? Well, it's our phones. I mean, we use our phones and we have AT&T, what, unlimited? Yep, we are on an unlimited data plan. Now, as long as we have a good AT&T signal, which for the most part has worked really well for us. Yeah, we've been lucky. We can use uh, the internet on our phones with no issues. Mm -hmm. Now, our unlimited plan also gives us 40 gigabytes of data for tethering purposes or hot spotting purposes, sure. depending on what you call it. Right. And because Patty has a phone and I have a phone, plus we have an iPad with right. phone service, we have 120 gigabytes per month that we can tether to things like our television. Right. So we can actually stream TV or hook up our laptops mm -hmm. for streaming purposes, primarily Zoom on our laptops, right. things like that. And that plan works out really well. Also, you might be thinking, wow, that sounds really expensive. Actually, it's not mm -hmm. that bad. With our particular plan that we're on and the fact that we have six uh, devices, right. we're paying about $40 a month for that unlimited mm -hmm. plan. What we did was we just found some family members that wanted to come on because AT&T gives you a better rate if you have more uh, numbers hooked uh -huh. up to your account right. and so there's six of us with family members and it's a win-win for all of us because everybody gets that same great unlimited data plan plus the 40 gigabytes Absolutely. of hotspotting yeah 
It works great for us. Now, there have been a few times where we have gotten to places where um, there's no Wi-Fi and our AT&T just, just doesn't, doesn't work. work yeah. One thing that we have tried in the past was we tried using a cell booster. Right. And we had the high boost. And three, four years ago, it worked really well in terms of if you could just mm -hmm. get a little bit of a signal, it would boost it enough. But that, don't you think it's kind of out of date? Unfortunately, I think our particular unit is out of date. And with today's technology on these cell phones, right. it just, seems to really struggle. Yeah, so I think up. if we wanted to use that, we would need to find yep. a, a newer version upgrade, yeah. of a cell <laughs> booster. But our last resort, which we dealt with this summer, because again, we were at that state park in Maine where we just could not get a signal, is we have to drive to town and find, find a spot that's Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately where we were at in Maine, Starbucks was not an Not option. available, not an option. So it was kind of hard to find. No, but periodically you can find small sure. private coffee houses yeah, or restaurants that yeah. will offer Wi-Fi. And we would just go in, do what we needed to do, and then head back to the trailer. Absolutely. And that was only for three nights, so we survived. We did. It was fine. <laughs> now, as you listen to some of our friends' videos, they're going to talk about other things that they use. Because some of them are full-time RVers right. working from the road, and they have to have really good signals yep. all the time. Yep. But for us, we have found with the way we travel, our cell phones, AT&T, works. works for us. Yep. So Patty's going to go ahead and link that playlist right up here for you so you can check out the other five videos in this collaboration series. And until next time, everyone, we'll see ya. Oops, on down the road. Bye. You okay? Zoe?